Hello, action anime lovers. It's Super Kami Guru 9000. I am Cory, and joined with me is Christian. Later within the Dragon Ball Z anime series, the race of Saiyans became the dominant force of power and proved very popular with fans of the series. So it comes as no surprise that Toei Animation decided to use the concept of a surviving Saiyan meeting Goku, and they used it in the anime series and even in some of the movies, like in the third movie, The Tree of Might with Turles. And they're going to do that again this time as well. Only there's a catch. This time they're facing a legendary Super Saiyan with the power to destroy whole galaxies. Can adding another Super Saiyan into the mix make this movie a cut above the rest? Find out in our review of the 8th Dragon Ball Z film, Broly, the Legendary Super Saiyan. Space, the final frontier, that is until Broly destroys it. The 8th movie opens up as we watch an entire galaxy explode ominously as King Kai watches. He mentions that this is the South Galaxy, so the South Kai is probably shitting a Dragon Ball right now. Growing fearful, King Kai decides to contact Goku to combat the oncoming threat. Meanwhile in the city, Goku and Chi Chi are attending a meeting in order to get Gohan into a better school, and you can imagine how much Goku loves doing this. At the same time over in a park, the whole gang of Gohan, Krillin, Future Trunks, Bulma, Vegeta, and the always useful Oolong and Roshi are enjoying a Cherry Blossom Festival. If you've ever wanted to hear Krillin sing, this is your chance. And whichever version you watch, whether it be the Japanese dub or the English version, it's bound to be painful. Fun fact! In the Funimation English dub, Krillin's song is from what I gathered about a lost puppy. Yeah. In the original Japanese dub, Krillin is singing the famous Japanese song, Subasa o Kudasai, a song made popular by the band Akatori in the 1970s. This song has been featured in many popular anime, such as K-On! and even the new Evangelion movies. Before Roshi can continue to get any drunker, a random spaceship appears before them. Tons of random soldiers emerge from the craft and are followed by a mysterious caped warrior. Vegeta immediately takes notice that he is a Saiyan, but pays him little attention until he mentions his name, which is Paragus. He wants Vegeta to be the new King Vegeta of the new planet Vegeta. Vegeta. He also mentions that they are menaced by a legendary Super Saiyan. Upon hearing this, Vegeta wastes no time following Paragus along and is shortly followed by the rest of the gang. Except Bulma. Because unlike Roshi and Oolong, she has common sense. Fun fact! Paragus's Japanese voice actor, Lemasa Kayumi, has voiced many famous anime characters, such as Father from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. He seems to love being a dick of a dad. We finally arrive on the new planet Vegeta and we can see that it has seen some better days. We are then introduced to Paragus' awkward son, Broly. Paragus' army consists of some random-looking aliens, and I'm not sure if this is a mistake or not, but it looks like some of Frieza's goons have crashed the party. One of them informs Vegeta that the legendary Super Saiyan has been spotted, and he immediately goes to investigate. Strangely, he brings Broly with him. While they are gone, Trunks, Krillin, and Gohan discover that Paragus has been secretly using slave labor on the planet, and the gang intervenes, and Krillin manages to scare them off with a flurry of punches and kicks. That is until Goku arrives on the planet with help from King Kai, and ends up getting decked in the face by Krillin. I also just want to say, I loved how they animated Goku using instant transmission. The colors are all crazy, and they're pretty trippy looking. FUN FACT! Broly's Japanese voice actor, Ben Shimada, has voiced famous One Piece villains, Wapole and Foxy. Talk about opposite ends of the spectrum. So I think it's time we get our first confrontation with Broly. When Goku meets Paragus for the first time, he doesn't think too much about it because he's offered free food. However, when he meets his son Broly, tension fills the air and Paragus has to step in to control his enraged son with some weird device on his hand. It works, but Paragus feels he might lose control of his son, and this is where we learn the backstory. Broly was born with an immense amount of power, but he had anger issues, possibly due to the fact that he was born right next to Goku, and Goku's constant crying pissed Broly off. Broly had so much power that King Vegeta decided he was a threat to their race, so King Vegeta blasts the hell out of Paragus and stabs Baby Broly. Both of them are tossed into the garbage heap. Dude, Saiyans are dicks. Twist of fate as Frieza is destroying the planet, Broly springs to life and saves his father. After years of conditioning, Broly becomes Paragus' personal attack dog, and in time he learns to control him so that he can conquer the entire galaxy. But Paragus has a lot of work to do, because apparently the planet they're on is about to be destroyed. And Goku appears to throw another wrench into his plans, as Broly loses control and attacks Goku in his sleep. The battle here is just an appetizer, as both fighters toy with each other. Broly is just insane. He has no remorse and just loves to watch shit explode. I'm sure he loves Michael Bay movies. Eventually, Paragus stops the fight and takes Broly away. 
Goku realizes that Broly is the legendary Super Saiyan, and in the coming morning, he reveals this fact to Vegeta and the others. And that's when all hell breaks loose. So Paragus knows he's fucked up, and that's when Broly decides to cut loose. This transformation scene is just just awesome, guys. It's creepy, metal, and disturbing all at the same time. Broly's face is literally ripped apart as he explodes, and what we see next is a hulking mass of muscle and rage. Broly, in his legendary Super Saiyan form, is just a force of nature as he proceeds to rock Goku's world and destroy the planet. Hilariously enough, Vegeta has his tail between his legs and can't get his shit together to fight. The rest of the movie is mostly just Broly destroying the Z Fighters one by one. The action in this part of the movie is definitely a highlight, especially when they get to fight in this post-apocalyptic looking city. Broly just trudges forward like a fucking Godzilla as Goku hits him point blank with a Kamehameha, but Broly just dominates it all. Because it's mandatory, Piccolo shows up to back up his peeps, and he goes around the battlefield dispensing out sensu beans to all of his buddies. But by far Piccolo's best scene is when he slaps some sense into Vegeta and literally carries him by his hair to the battlegrounds. It's really funny and kind of demoralizing on Vegeta's part, but it definitely makes for a great laugh. Vegeta pumps himself up for his eventual defeat and manages to get a few good hits on Broly until Broly swats him like a fly. Paragus tries to escape the doomed planet until he gets his comeuppance when Broly finds him trying to escape. Broly then crushes the space pod that his father is inside and crushes him to death, then throws him away. The film ends in a typical fashion with all of the heroes being beaten by Broly and only Goku can stop him. In a somewhat cop-out move, our heroes give Goku their green-looking energy, which gives Goku the edge in the final battle. Goku and Broly have a final standoff, and Goku finishes off Broly with a punch to the stomach, which causes him to explode and erupt from his own great power. As the planet falls apart, our heroes escape with a combination of spaceships and instant transmission. Back on Earth, Goku and Chi-Chi have a final laugh, and thus ends Broly the Legendary Super Saiyan. Whew, I'm glad we're never going to see that guy again. Two more times. T Fuck! So, what does Super Kami Guru 9000 think of Broly, the legendary Super Saiyan? This is actually one of my favorite Dragon Ball Z movies because I always found Broly to be a really interesting bad guy. Yes, he's kind of one-dimensional, they just sort of powers up, but a badass, evil Super Saiyan is interesting to me. And uh, I actually always thought that the fight scenes in this movie, especially uh, one that we actually mentioned in this review already, uh, was Goku hitting him point blank with a Kamehameha was so badass. And it just like, it just shows you how tough Broly is. And also that scene where he like grabs Vegeta by the neck or the head and like throws him into that wall and it creates that huge crater. It's just all that stuff really shows off Broly's power. And uh, I also thought it was like, usually you don't see people like get crushed like his dad Broly's dad was in the space pod but it was like pretty brutal and it was like whoa like he just killed his dad by crushing him in a metal pod like that's pretty intense that's a little little more meaner than you usually see in a Dragon Ball Z style like median and I really did enjoy this movie on the whole originally I was ready to hate Broly the legendary Super Saiyan if only for the fact that its villain just seemed really really one-dimensional and in a lot of senses he is he's just a big hulking monster but upon watching this movie again, I've really realized that the real villain of the movie is actually his father, Paragus. And uh, it's interesting because Paragus is not a powerhouse in any sense of the means. He's just kind of a weak, low-level Saiyan. He just happens to have a really powerful son. And he's really out for revenge against, you know, the world that sort of screwed him over from the beginning. And since, you know, there are no more Saiyans left, I guess this is his only option to go after the only ones left and kill them and take over their current planet of Earth. Which is kind of convoluted and crazy. But still, it's pretty interesting in its own right. I do think it's also kind of cool how they're able to tie in uh, Brawly's origins and his father kind of into the same event when Frieza destroys the planet. Because now we have a few different events that are taking place here. You have Goku leaving the planet for the first time. You have Cooler watching these events for the first time. And now you have Brawly. And this is, of course, the, uh, the death of Goku's father, Bardock. So this is a lot of information and a lot of really important events that sort of spin the series in all of its different directions, and that's really cool. Uh, another thing I appreciate about this movie is that it definitely fits into the actual timeline of the anime series. It apparently takes place, like, right before the Cell games, and you can tell this because Gohan is all Super Saiyan powered up. He's not Super Saiyan 2 yet, and uh, he doesn't really get used too much. Again, this is another one of those movies where Goku pretty much does most of the fighting, but it doesn't really matter because Broly is just such a dominating force in the entire movie that only really one good hit gets hit with him through that, the entire movie, and that's the final hit. And that's what kills him. And uh, that's what makes him just such a scary villain. Nothing can stop this guy. He, his body will explode and transform into something even more powerful. 
he, he's not really human. He's not really saying he's just, he's a monster. He's a devil, as he says himself in the movie. And uh, I think that's also why this movie is so popular, too. It's, uh, it's just a great villain. And uh, it's an expanded movie, unlike the last ones, which have a running time of about 40 minutes long. This one's about an hour, a little over an hour long, so there's more time to develop the characters and a lot more build-up. There's a lot of comedy at the beginning with Goku having to wear his suit during the interview and everything. And uh, there's all the stuff with Roshi and Oolong, which is just... Let me, let me speak about Roshi for a second. Roshi, again, is used in this movie all for laughs. And I understand what they're trying to do. He's, he's an old warrior who's past his prime and everything. I do think it's kind of slightly insulting, but it is kind of funny because there are a lot of scenes in this movie he makes a ton of, ton of ridiculous faces, uh, one of which is actually a cameo. Uh, it's the face of a character named Errol, who's a character from the Dr. Slump, uh, Dr. Slump manga, which is actually another manga series created from uh, Akira Toriyama, and uh, he even does a Super Saiyan beard, which is pretty funny. Uh, but still, this pretty much gives the Dragon Ball fans exactly what they want, uh, a ton of action, their favorite characters, uh, a little mini arc that will give them something that'll satisfy satisfy them for the next coming episodes, and uh, Broly proved really popular because he appeared in a few more movies coming later, he appeared in the next one coming up uh, right after Bojack, and he even had another one called Bio Broly, and we'll get to that one later because that movie fucking sucks ass, but that's me getting ahead of myself, this is Broly the Legendary Super Saiyan, the first Broly movie, I think it's pretty damn good, I didn't like it at first, but after watching it a few times, I can understand why people like it. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this Dragon Ball Z movie review. If you want to show us how thankful you are, make sure to give us a thumbs up and leave a comment below about your favorite part in this movie. Okay, you guys, until next time, Super Comic Guru 9000, out.